In the mid-19th century, spiritualism swept across the Western world. People of all backgrounds and all levels of education became fascinated by the idea that the living could communicate with the dead. Seances, gatherings where individuals attempted to connect with the spirits of the departed, became extremely popular among all members of society. Some people were driven by grief, some by curiosity, and some, including many scientists, wanted to see if this new movement could deliver solid evidence of the afterlife. Everybody close your eyes. Seances were typically delivered in the darkened room, where participants gathered around a table, often with a medium, and attempted to contact the spirits through various methods. Other seances involved participants placing their hands on a table that would seemingly move or levitate as the spirits clamoured for attention. But today, the most popular and probably iconic way to chat with the dead is through a Ouija board. The internet is filled with various versions of this occultic object, but for those on a budget, the same results are supposedly possible using an upturned wine glass on a flat surface. In either case, participants rest their fingers on a pointer, either a planchette or the glass, while asking questions of the spirits. And we will ask our first question, is there anyone here? If they are present, they are meant to move the pointer to spell out their responses. Many people who have experimented with the type of seance claim to feel an external force gently guiding the pointer. Are the spirits of the dead communicating with the living through these tools? The answer is no. What seems like a ghostly form of communication can often be explained by micro-movements or idiomotor movements. Science would say this is caused by something called the idiomotor effect. People are pushing the planchette, but they're not consciously aware of the fact that they're doing that. Um, and this is something that has been kind of studied quite extensively. It, it, it's the same explanation that applies to dowsing. In fact, one of my favourite examples of an investigation of this sort was uh, going back to the time of Michael Faraday. Mm. There, there was a craze of what was called table tilting back in the Victorian era. And uh, the idea there was you'd take a small, round, wooden table... The sitters would put their hands on the table and they'd attempt to communicate with the spirits by asking questions. And on a successful session, then uh, allegedly the, the table would move of its own accord. There'd be just, you know, jolts and jerks. And sometimes on a really good session, it might end up with them having to chase the table around the room, trying to keep their hands in contact with it. Now, Faraday heard about this. He wanted to get the bottom of it, so he actually did some experiments. He got... He got people in who were doing this table tilting. Uh, I'll just give you one example. He came up with this, a series of kind of quite ingenious experiments. But for, like, for example, rather than getting people to put their hands directly on the table surface, he had layers of waxed paper and they put their hands on top of the waxed paper, which was then obviously on top of the table surface. Now, if you think about it, if the table moves to the right, if it's an external force that's causing that, perhaps a spirit, then people's hands will drag behind it a little bit and the wax sheets will be spread to the left. Mm. If, on the other hand, they are moving the table themselves, even though they're not aware of it, then the table will drag behind their hands and the wax sheets will be spread out to the right. And you can guess what he found. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I really like the fact that he was open to testing it mm. and to explaining it rather than just dismissing it. The power of suggestion plays an important role here too. When people expect a message from the beyond, they unconsciously influence the outcome. Combined with a darkened room, an often emotionally charged setting, and the drama of the whole situation, these subtle movements can easily be mistaken for ghostly interventions. Research has even shown that, if blindfolded, seance participants will only produce gibberish rather than meaningful messages from beyond the grave. <laughs> <laughs> 